Jones here with another episode of Everything Entrepreneurial. In this episode, I'm speaking with John Brady. John is a co-founder of Bowsy, and Bowsy is an integrated remote working platform that connects university students with global businesses in a bid to replace traditional part-time student work with remote tasks and projects that are related to their field of study. The platform solves several problems for both employers and students and reinvents both how companies manage their talent pipeline and how students earn a living. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Well, thanks very much, John, for coming on Everything Entrepreneurial. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your business? Yeah, thanks, Kurt. It's great to be here. Um, my name's John Brady, and I'm the, the CEO and one of the co-founders of a, an Irish startup called Bowsy.com. Um, we've been around in Ireland for two years, but we've been building the business for over four years. Uh, and what we do is very simple. We're, we're connecting uh, university students in Ireland with Irish businesses through remote uh, project work and tasks. Um, so we're creating a marketplace where uh, Irish university students can apply for work that has, that's related to their field of study. They get paid for it. They get relevant work experience. It helps them get the job when they're leaving university. And then uh, for, for Irish businesses, it's a very simple way to connect with graduate talent. You know, that's a, a lot of them kind of struggle to connect with. Um, the, the platform gives the companies a lot of flexibility so they don't have to worry about contracts or employer contributions, etc. They can hire a student for four hours or for four months. So it's a relatively uh, straightforward uh, kind of business model. And um, we, like I said, we started it in Ireland around two years ago when the idea of remote work and the idea of throwing students into the mix, you know, uh, was a bit of a stretch of the imagination for some people. And then obviously things changed quite dramatically with the changes driven by COVID and attitudes to remote working, et cetera. So in a, in a strange way, that's kind of uh, been a huge driver of a positive change for us. Um, and, you know, we've been um, very well supported by Enterprise Ireland over the past couple of years in terms of our journey. Um, and you know the business continues to grow so it's a very exciting bit place to be it's a completely new experience for me um up to uh, um 2019 i was working in a in a very kind of safe secure job and decided to to jump ship um pre-covid uh, not knowing what was around the corner uh, so it's been a, a challenging journey but so far so good i think what made you want to take that leap of faith in starting your own business? And also, where did you get this idea from? Well, I was uh, living in Croatia at the time, and it was basically two dads who were kind of emotionally coming to terms that their daughters were going to go to university and get ready <laughs> for them to leave the roost. And uh, it was a realisation that, that things really hadn't changed dramatically in the past 25 years since I left university. You know, although technology had changed dramatically, the nature of student work hadn't. No, they're still delivering, driving, pet sitting, working in restaurants and bars. And there's nothing wrong with that in the first couple of years. But, you know, uh, as students get towards their kind of final years and that they're looking at the job market, uh, a lot of the students that we talk to found a lack of experience getting a, is a real barrier in them getting their, their jobs. And that was the kind of the, the main motivation, which was our own daughters and you know, the realization that um, uh, things really hadn't changed dramatically, uh, although the technology was there to support it, um, you know, that the opportunities for students were very limited. And but the more we looked at it, the more we realized that, um, you know, different students had different access to opportunities and that there wasn't really a level playing field for students when they're going into the job market. And that, that could simply be because of location. You know, I'm based in Tullamore and I don't have access to the bigger companies in, D in Dublin or Cork, for example, without moving and incurring costs, et cetera. It could be because I'm, I'm going to, you know, a, a regional university or institute that's not on the kind of the milk round for some of the big companies. Um, it could be as well, like, because I'm a first generation um, university student, you know, and I don't have any network. You know, a lot of students will get their first jobs maybe through networks, through their family, et cetera. Um, and, it, you know, it was realizing that there wasn't really a level playing field for students and getting access to opportunities. And there was quite a lot of academic research on this, both from the UK and from Georgetown University that was showing that university students who, who were lucky enough to get a part-time job that was related to what they were studying were amongst the best academic performers. 
they had a better network and went on to enjoy better careers. But the vast majority of students were still working in traditional jobs, part-time jobs, and didn't have access to those opportunities. And it went on to kind of say as well that uh, for lower income students, it, it disproportionately impacted them because these guys were often having to work longer hours to make ends meet as well as studying. You know, So when companies are looking at students, they're comparing them on their, their, their grades. And it's not really even a fair comparison because you might be comparing somebody who's working 20 or 30 hours in a fast food restaurant and balancing the study against a student who's lucky enough to work full time on their or focus full time on their studies. So we, we saw that the Bowsey, uh, the company, was provide a good opportunity to kind of create a level playing field for students. So everybody had equal access to opportunities and also for companies. I mean, there's a lot of goodwill in companies and good intentions in terms of reaching out to kind of lesser served communities or other students, but a lot of companies kind of struggle in making that connection uh, and kind of default to the, re the, the, the more traditional graduate recruitment process. So in that way, we kind of helping small businesses get access to talent, but also helping uh, larger companies get access to a much more diverse and broader talent pool that they wouldn't normally have access to. So, for example, for the cost of a traditional summer internship for around three or four students, you could access maybe 40 to 50 students through remote project work. So we saw it as really driving a very strong kind of a, a positive change. Um, and, you know, that's been reflected in the fact that uh, nearly all of the universities that we uh, uh, talked to are supporting uh, Bowsey at some level. Um, so that was the kind of the main motivation. We, we, we did a pilot in Croatia, like uh, I was uh, uh, based there. In fact, four of the team were, were, were dads that I knew from uh, Croatia. We, we developed the, the MVP or the, the basic platform in Croatia. We tested it there. Um, we had, uh, on some occasions, hundreds of students registering, you know, uh, every day. Um, in Croatia, we had a, a real challenge because th there was a, all the students, unlike Ireland and most of Europe, all the students have to get, uh, go through this kind of the student union and had to pay a certain amount of, uh, of their uh, money had to go to the student union. And that didn't really make it commercially viable in Croatia. But what we were able to do was validate the technology validate the demand uh, and work on, on the improved platform, which we launched in Ireland uh, in 2020. So what did you do in relation, because there's two markets there essentially, isn't there? There's the students and then there's the businesses. Uh, what way did you approach each? Um, did they have any involvement in the development of your, your services, I suppose? Did, how did you get feedback from both sides? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, with the exception, the obvious exception of myself, like I'm one of the oldest in the company by around 20 odd years. Uh, <laughs> most of Bowsey is kind of run by uh, students. So we either have kind of recent graduates or students who are currently uh, in their final years of study. And we uh, we built Bowsey through a kind of a network of, of student ambassadors. So um, we, we employ student ambassadors from a lot of the universities like UCD, uh, UCC, University of Limerick, etc. And those student ambassadors um, introduced the students to Bowsey uh, platform. They, they put a human face onto it, you know, uh, explains them what Bowsey is, is about. And that's been very effective in getting students uh, on board the platform. And uh, at the same time, we, you know, we get inputs and feedback from the students to kind of improve our model. Can we include this? Have you thought about that? So it's very, obviously, it's a startup. It's a very flat organization, but everybody kind of has a, has a say. And we really are kind of a student led organization. And as well as having students coming from the various different universities, a lot of them double hat. So we have students representing the, uh, you know, some of the key student communities. So we have a student ambassador from uh, LGBTQ community. We have a student ambassador from DARE. DARE is the Disability Access Route Education, uh, you know, for, for students with both physical and mental disabilities. Uh, from here, which is basically, uh, here's higher uh, education access route for students coming from lower income backgrounds as well. We recently now have an ambassador from the Refugee Council of Ireland as well, who's joined 
and is in contact with other students, you know, in those communities. So we, we've tried to be as inclusive as possible, as possible, not just in terms of, you know, uh, some of the key universities, but also making sure that we had like ground up representation from some of the, the key student communities who may be facing their own barriers and getting uh, work experience, etc. So that's been a really key part of it is a kind of a, a, a ground up kind of approach and building the kind of the student uh, network and letting them understand, you know, this isn't about getting, yes, you have the benefit of getting paid, you have the, you know, you have the benefit of, you know, getting flexible remote work that helps you with your study, but it's really about helping students in, in a transition from, you know, uh, doing your final exams to getting a job that you want. And, one of the interesting things for students is it allows them to understand what they're good at, where they add value and what they enjoy. And that isn't necessarily what they're studying, because I don't know about you, but for me, I kind of uh, I did a Bachelor of Commerce degree because it did a bit of everything. You did a bit of marketing, accounting. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, what I enjoyed. And I found that out over 10 years of work, exp of, of working, you know, the hard way. And, and by getting this kind of remote work experience, it allows students like with fairly low Kind of involvement or risk to, to really try different areas of work and we've had a management accounting student who realized he doesn't like management accountancy he loves the creative space he loves social media creating blogs etc so it, it also allows the students to really navigate their careers before they sign their first contract you know and have a better idea of where they add value for the employers and um, you know for the small businesses to get things done you know they they connect with graduates that they wouldn't normally be able to connect with um, but, uh, you know, when they're looking at employment, it allows them to understand the less tangible things, you know, in a student, from a student, you know, they wouldn't come across in a CV or an interview. They could say, well, they could look at their leadership skills, they could look at the creativity, etc. And it really allows the, 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 the potential employer to understand the student, you know, from a much more kind of holistic um, uh, perspective. So it's kind of a win-win a, a scenario. And it, you know, it also addresses some of the skills gaps, which a lot of employers talk about, you know, that they have to invest a lot of money in bringing students up to speed, but by doing kind of practical work and, and, and the kind of the, the work that the students do kind of reflects the, the um, you know, uh, all of the different courses across the universities in Ireland. So we've had students doing, you know, search engine optimization for small businesses, building a website or a shop front. One of the things that uh, um, students have been doing a lot of, of work around business plans. So helping small businesses in terms of, you know, a business plans, which may be for a grant application or maybe for a bank loan, et cetera. And the students will do, you know, the, the, the market research, you know, you'll have a finance student doing the, the financials and the projections and they take a lot of the work out of it. And they, they'll also proactively go. So some companies will say, look, uh, uh, you know, I'm suffering now in COVID. I'm not really aware what grant aid is available for me. The student go out and find out, look, there's four, based on your business here, four or five areas where you can get support from various different grants. They'll identify them. They could actually, um, you know, help you uh, apply for it as well. And then it could be stuff like graphic design, logos. So there's a huge amount of stuff that the students can, can actually do for the businesses. And then uh, there's kind of longer term benefits of connecting students with your know, practical projects and uh, potentially uh, getting them opportunities, your know, longer term for careers or companies that they wouldn't normally connect with. Yeah, so that's excellent. kind of uh, 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 how it works. And um, we, uh, you know, like I said, we, we cover most of the Irish universities and we're really keen to reach out to a lot of the uh, uh, the regional third level institutes as well. It's not just about the, the big universities. We want it to be as, as kind of a, as representative as possible across the student population. And we're kind of building our network with the, a lot of the kind of employer associations. So yesterday there was a press release from the Shannon Chamber of Commerce uh, encouraging employers to look at Bowsey or companies look at, at Bowsey as a, a new way of bringing talent on board, connecting students with some regional businesses that might ha might have the resources elsewhere. And there's some great companies there within that. So it, that's that's how we've been growing, like kind of organically on both sides, you know, in terms of the students and also in terms of the businesses. That's brilliant. And I'd just like to uh, turn my attention to you yourself as a first time entrepreneur. I'm curious to hear your experience uh, setting up a business and getting funding in Ireland. Uh, what was that like? What challenges did you face? And um, do you have any advice for people who might have a business idea or want to start 
uh, their own business. Uh, if you could share some of your ideas or thoughts, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, we had like uh, one of the other co-founders. The, the one thing about Bowsy is we've got a, there's a lot of uh, different nationalities. I think we've got seven nationalities working in a company and they're working remotely around from five different countries. And uh, when we were moving from Croatia, there was a lot of discussion about whether we go to the Netherlands or whether we go to Ireland for our funding, etc. I obviously was keen on Ireland, not just emotionally, but also uh, there was a very strong, objectively, there was a very strong reason why Ireland is one of the best countries in terms of supporting uh, entrepreneurs. And we got huge support from Enterprise Ireland. And you know, uh, the support you know, uh, happens at two levels. One is, is Leo, which is a local enterprise office. You know, which really it can help uh, you know local businesses you know from from the idea stage up to the funding stage, and then for for um, uh, and that can be, and you can move through Leo down to Enterprise Ireland, where you know if you have the potential to to employ ten or more people and drive certain revenue amounts of revenue you go to Enterprise Ireland, but both of them effectively help you uh, across you know the, the full kind of journey from refining your business model your idea. What are the funding options, etc.? And it's it's a uh, it's it's something that you don't see in any other countries. I mean, we, we looked at the Netherlands, we looked at a few others, uh, but effectively, the, the way that the Irish um, uh, process works is, if you if you're approved for things like by the Irish government, you're approved for EIIS, for example. Um, if an, if someone invests a hundred euros in your in your company, they'll get uh, their tax back. I think they'll get forty euros back. They'll, uh, so they invest net 60 euros in your company. And then uh, with Enterprise Ireland, you have the potential to nearly double that. You know, so if they invest 100 euros, which costs them 60 euros, and then you get another 100 euros potentially from, from Enterprise Ireland. So for somebody investing 60 euros, a company gets 200 euros at the end of that, which is really unique. And then mm. for companies that are looking to expand, yeah, Enterprise Ireland uh, are helping us now in early stage conversations with the US market. Um, we, we, Bowsy won a, um, a pitching challenge in San Francisco for, um, uh, it, was the Enterprise, it was the Premier Cup. And we were the first Irish company to be accepted into um, um, HR Tech Accelerator in the US called People Tech Partners. Well done. Um, and the first non-US company to join them. And that was through Enterprise Ireland. Uh, both here in Ireland and in the US. So we've got a huge amount of support. Having said that, like it's uh, it's still a very uh, it's kind of scary proposition going from, uh, you know, a well-paid kind of a, a safe job to going out on your own. And it's kind of a bit of naive optimism helps as well. Like um, we found out, I think in, in January or February, uh, this year that we were accepted for um, uh, seed funding with a uh, you know, spark crowdfunding who helped us um, uh, get our initial round of funding and we were celebrating in February you know uh, that's great news you know, the money's coming through but we never got the, we, the money only arrived in October and, and that's the normal process it could take six to eight months but at the time if someone told me you'd be waiting another six or eight months to go through all the due diligence and everything else I wouldn't have been so enthusiastic but that's kind of what keeps you going is a little bit of naive um, uh, optimism and Ireland there's plenty of options now I think also for funding um, the, the, the traditional route was always uh, the VC or venture capital route uh, where you'd have a uh, kind of um, uh, uh, companies investing or large investors investing in the company uh, and taking a share in the company for that and then also very recently now you have the, the crowdfunding coming in which is the route that we went down uh, and that's relatively new to Ireland it's, it's quite well established in the UK and the US etc um, and, and they're helping an awful lot of companies raise money and, and you know recently on, on the Spark crowdfunding I saw there were some companies that are raising up to a million dollars or million euros I should say in funding so there's a lot of kind of uh, resources as well in terms of getting investment as well. And there's a lot of support from, uh, you know, uh, not just Enterprise Ireland, there's a lot of hubs. Like we, we, we are based in the Guinness Enterprise Centre yeah. uh, and they've given they've been fantastic for us, like in terms of building our network, uh, getting us involved in different programmes, connecting us with universities. So we were through, through the Guinness Enterprise Centre, we were able to do a, a, a project with Tulane University, which is in New Orleans. Uh, wow. So we had some of their executive MBA pro, uh, students working on a project for us that was uh, helping us refine our business model, you know, uh, you know, highly experienced guys from the US. So 
it, it's a uh, uh, there's a huge kind of network support you know, not just through the hubs like Guinness, uh, Guinness Enterprise Center from the Enterprise Ireland as well and then also you see there's a lot of VCs and everything else in there and, and the starting point for, for most companies is, is Leo um, you know and you know uh, it's very easy to find out where local Leo is and they'll start you on, on that path. And there's, there's also a lot of grants that are available for companies starting up. So we got a financial aid grant um, uh, from Enterprise Ireland to help us with our financials and our planning, etc. So we were able to engage, you know, um, uh, uh, a big finance company in Ireland to help us with our planning, etc. And that really helps if you get that right up front when you're talking to yeah. investors, you say, look, these aren't our numbers. These numbers were, uh, were they're official. Were like this. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. So the countdown are optimistic numbers, but yeah. So uh, it's been an um, uh, uh, exciting process. It's, it's a bit nerve wracking, a little bit challenging. There's a lot of admin and um, uh, due diligence that needs to be done. You know, when you're going through uh, um, uh, the finance process, I mean, you, you think of a mortgage and and double it, think of the work you have to do to get a mortgage application, you know, double it or triple it, you know, uh, to get uh, uh, the, the funding, but uh, it's worth it. And I think uh, our, I, when you look at the due diligence in Ireland, I think the, the, the amount of um, uh, startups that are funded, that were funded by Enterprise Ireland and still are in business, let's say a couple of years later, is much higher than other countries, you know, particularly in the US where you see a lot of money going to early stage companies you don't necessarily see the same kind of due diligence. Um, and you have, you know, uh, you have some companies that really exceed and, and they grow huge, but you have a lot of companies who don't make it. I think in Ireland, it's, it's kind of a steadier path, you know, because of the, the support due diligence that take you through. Uh, so you don't, you don't, you don't see the, 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 the same kind of uh, failure rate as you would in other countries as well, which is a great reflection on, on how the Irish system works as well, I think. Yeah, that's a great insight. I, I didn't know that. Thanks for sharing. Um, in relation to Bowsy, the next six to 12 months, what challenges do you face and what goals do you have in mind? Like, what do you want to achieve in the next six to 12 months? Yeah, I mean, uh, at the moment where our full focus is in Ireland, um, you know, we, there's not a lot of people who are aware of us. Uh, and there's a real challenge now to, to kind of drive uh, scale for the business. A lot of our business is growing through word of mouth and repeat business, which is a great sign that people are using us to bring us into other areas of the business uh, and are recommending us to other companies as well. And uh, our, our primary focus now this year and next year is on Ireland. At the same time, we're, we're kind of expanding organically. So we, we started doing business uh, with companies in the UK this year for the first time using Irish students um, and we've, we're, we're now actually uh, kind of talking to universities in France and in Spain uh, Very good. which again organically through other universities or through students themselves um, so um, our uh, primary focus now is Ireland the UK longer term we're looking at the US so um, like I say, we're participating in, in this um, um, accelerator program in the US with People Tech Partners. Uh, they're introducing us to, you know, uh, to some uh, amazing companies uh, in the US. Uh, their kind of partner network include, you know, people from uh, Amazon, Uber, Facebook, et cetera. Um, and uh, we have the opportunity to talk to them about Bowsy. So we've had, to the guys in in the US, we've had I think close to ten sessions with six different companies. So it's kind of speed dating for business development. You know, we've been introduced to around sixty US companies who kind of talking to us about pilots, talking to us about how we could make our business model more relevant to them. So the US is uh, uh, is I think after Ireland, the UK will be uh, a big kind of opportunity for us, and, and certainly next year we're going to be spending time on uh, uh, developing that. And we're lucky enough, we've got three people on the ground in the US um, who are all friends of mine uh, from Croatia who are based in the US and they're acting as strategic advisors. So they're doing a lot of the groundwork. So in that way, we've been very lucky that we don't, uh, we're not kind of splitting our resources, you know, um, in terms of the management team here. We're lucky to have people on the ground there uh, to help manage that. And, you know, what, what we, we, we want to do as well is something very similar to what we've, we've uh, done in Ireland is, you know, build up a network of student ambassadors 
uh, start talking to some of the universities and, and focusing probably um, on the, the uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area, because uh, obviously the US is, is a massive market and, and yeah. next to San Francisco and California, that area is one of the highest densities in terms of universities, community right. colleges, uh, HBCUs, which are historically black college and universities as well. So, uh, and there's a great, uh, there's a very strong Irish American business network as well, which we hope to leverage. So the US is very exciting, but uh, our focus now is on the bread and butter, is making sure that we get traction in Ireland. You know, uh, we can we generate awareness around Bowsey uh, here and we get students to work and we get the uh, um, you know, Irish businesses as well to, to benefit from it as well. Brilliant. Well, look, John, it's been amazing talking to you. I love listening to your story. Uh, I'm happy to share your story as well, share your company with people. Um, I hope more people get involved. I hope students that listen to this check you out. It's a real advantage for them, like you said at the start. Is there anywhere online that people can go, your website or socials to find us? So it's yeah, our, our, the company is bowsy.com. So that's b o w s y.com. So anyone can go to the to the website. Uh, if they want to drop us an email, they can drop us an email. It's hello at bowsy.com. Um, and uh, we'd love to talk to anybody who's interested. We have you know uh, we've a, a good team here, experienced team here that can uh, kind of help guide people through the process. They can also just register online, browse through the students we've got. Um, I, I think we've got connections with over 90% of the student population in Ireland, meaning that we're either working with a career centre for one of the universities or we have a student ambassador or working with a student union. So we've got very, very good coverage now. And, and, and you know, some businesses say, well, look, I, I'm, I'm based in um, uh, uh, Sligo. I'd love to work with students, particularly from IT Sligo or you know, for Shannon, it's University of Limerick and some of the other ones. So as well, it's, they can also work with students from their own locality as well. Uh, and we can help connect them. So it's very easy. Just drop us an email, hello at bowsy.com or go to the website, bowsy.com. Brilliant. Well, once again, John, thanks very much for sharing your story and your time with us. I really appreciate it, Ari. Wishing you the best of luck. Thanks very much. Thanks for the opportunity, Curtis. Cheers.